Nick had it before. He's familiar with these envi well, with this environment. He likes playing here. And he looks comfortable bowling to left-handers. He's got a natural tendency to angle the ball across them. Terrific shot from Langer. He just had to beat Vittori at mid-on, and he timed it well enough to do that. Great shot. Terrific shot down the ground. That's the best of the morning. Let's see if this gets there. There's a, a slower outfield today. It looks as though it will just make it. 50 up. The fuller length you're after, but it, this one just a little too full. It's a genuine half volley, a slot ball. Justin Lang is footwork getting better and better, better. He's now making good strides. That's his hitting zone through that extra cover. That's where he'll free his arms again. This one has gone square, a behind point not so much in control of this stroke but just as effective because he was able to keep it down glorious doesn't even bother to move Justin Langer all over Lou Vinson and away for four Langer went hard at it but it was a bit too tight for the cut shot and uh, Langer prospers 82 without loss catch in the air given out New Zealand had the first wicket in the morning. <laughs> Justin Langer departs with a little edge, then onto pad, and taken by McCann. Doesn't look happy about it. No, departs with a wry smile. He looked down at his arm, so if we watch the replay closely, you'll see there. Just got to see if there was a touch of glove on the way through. This, perhaps the side-on angle will reveal there it was, but from the front on, it, it looks as if it may... There, look, Langer looking down at his arm. So Australia breakthrough for New Zealand. Australia now 82 for one. Four runs for Matthew Hayden. That's close. He's got to give it. He has. That's beautifully bowled Daniel Vittori. Yeah, the smiles all around. He's done punting in the air. Left them high and dry, and that's a fair enough call. And maybe this is the turn for Vittori. The pressure all morning. It's been immaculate flight. Changes of pace suddenly. And look at Ponning's legs are all over the place. He was turning it to the onside or attempting to, and it was a miss, and I think the right decision was made. Good shot. Yeah, that's a good shot. Just a little full from Daniel Vittori. Margin for error, very small. We all know that. That pad. That ball. Craig coming now. Where did he cop this? You've got all your protection at the front of your legs, but your natural reaction is to turn away when you see the shot, and it's hit him, it's hit him just above, just above, and it's nearly stuck. He, he's nearly caught this. I was involved in a similar in incident against England in a, a Boxing Day Test match, and. And while ducking for cover, it wedged between my legs, and it can happen. It's <laughs> frightfully unlucky if you're the batter, but it, he's nearly taken that coming. Roisman a chance to run around. Yes. Well played. Such a strong player. It's not going to run away. Very well. It's just going to get there. This outfield is particularly slow because of the weather in the past couple of days. But an easy shot there from Matthew Hayden. And, uh, it's obviously going to be just outside the off stump. No ball, full toss, and put away. And it's a poor start. You've got to say to yourself that psychologically, James Franklin has not arrived at the ground. Oh, good stroke. He just uh, played this off the pitch. Oh, oh, oh. Slow outfield uh, denies Hayden a four but it doesn't deny him going to 50, and that is a very well-compiled half-century. Hayden. Hayden, now 20 50s to go with 20 100s. 
just a little bit of luck there. He'll bring him his fifth boundary, but driving at Franklin gets a thick outside edge. That's a bit of a slog, but it's uh, very effective. I just think these New Zealand, uh, these bowlers, the young bowlers particularly, wait, 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 need to get the tea towel out. I know that sounds a bit weird. You used, you used the word handkerchief before and move it around the pitch as, to, as a target area to bowl at. It's all those hours and hours of bowling. If they can do that, then they're starting to get some control and some stock deliveries. Then when you get a chance like this morning, when it does swing, boy, this is what you've done all the hard work for. Start to do something then. I'm talking about targets. I, I'll never, never forget. In fact, we mentioned it this morning before play when we were out on the pitch. When we saw it. In fact, it's true, a bird dropping on the pitch. That was the only mark that was different to the actual colour on the, on the pitch. And I said, uh, that reminded me of uh, when Stephen Bock bowling on a flat wicket at Eden Park against Pakistan in the late 80s and they were about 600 for two kissed the pitch and yelled out to Ewan Chatfield I found a, you a wet spot to aim at <laughs> and I tell you what Charlie he went looking for it half-hearted appeal Ewan Chatfield had that ability don't worry about a tea towel just put a plaster down so I remember uh his accuracy was quite legendary. The farmer, the Mur, the Nine Nine Express. He really uh, could find if there's anything in the pitch that he'd wander out and just just as he passed the pitch, the moustache would just twitch a little. And the job at me and Dad saying to him, "You come over to Karachi and be my bowling machine." That's how accurate he was. Mechanical. He was one of those bowlers that you considered as a batsman to wearing an inside thigh pad. And then you thought, no, I'm not going to concede anything here. And you just took a few un in there anyway. You and Chatfield. In the air, gone! Franklin has done it! He's been building on a bit of uh, pressure and Hayden has got ahead of himself here and he's chipped an easy catch to cover. And he's gone. Now let's just see if he does get out in front with the, the bat. He's certainly using the bottom hand. It's lifted comfortably out to Lou Vincent. So Franklin picks up his first wicket at the Basin Reserve. Delighted. Let's see if that changes uh, his fortune today. Hayden's gone for 61, 146 for three. Matthew Hayden out. That we're on for how many years, you reckon? Eight years they were. Eight years. Those memorable ones. Uh, illustrated cricket and the preparation for cricket. The groundsman, you'll remember those ads. Uh, cricket lovers throughout the country. Well, Tim Spite was the younger of the two. Boys. And he'll be with Jeremy Coney during the break. They were good, but I prefer the ones that, that are on now. Why? Well, the way that uh, it sort of sets the scene for uh, people getting ready to watch a game of cricket. You know, the farmer bowling the ball with the dog in the paddock. And the, everyone gathered around the cab in the, in the taxi cab rank. Oh, he's edged, and Fleming's taken the catch. That is brilliant cricket. What a magnificent bit of cricket there. Outswing, edge, and Fleming was there with those big hands. Consistency of line and length from Nathan Astor. You don't have to be 150 miles an hour or k's an hour. If you put it in the right spot often enough, you will induce a mistake. And Clark got a little bit ahead of himself there, pushing out in front of his pad, and Fleming had set the field perfectly. Clark goes for eight. It was tough work, those eight as well. 163 for four. That's a good stroke. Very fine shot indeed. And that's uh, just showing that he's uh, just continuing the great form he showed at Christchurch. 
just helped on its way that should run the way it does the Tory always committed in the field but can't bring that one back into the field of play again a loose delivery in O'Brien first ball Martin seizing it helping it's on it on its way just clipping it the Tory great effort talking about that commitment for Tory shows cost him he's bowled 24 overs already he'll be a tired man but giving us all for the team oh, oh so close Martin just hung his bat out there it was uh, almost a lazy shot in the end and he wasn't sure what he was trying to do with it and nearly brings it back onto the pegs in the end, he was trying to get his bat out of the way. Oh, get away. And you can hear, you hear Damien Martin in there that he, I, I reckon he thought he was going to be out. I, I thought he'd been completely done on length. Inside edge, and we'll wait, was waiting for the death rattle. And how often do you see that? The lucky break, and then the next ball goes for four. And normally the bowler, well, if he had his hand in his hair, in despair he's now taking it out but Martin helping that another strength of his so two boundaries this over and the ball in between was almost uh, sending Martin on his way it's a huge half an hour this Kenzie it's the half an hour or this next hour of play is is the most important for both sides yes. New Zealand have an opportunity. If they can get one wicket, it'll probably bring, it, bring about two. And that could mean having Australia seven wickets down or, or all out today. But if Australia can get through, if these two can get through the next half an hour to an hour, then I think Australia can turn it around. It'll make it an easier job for Adam Gilchrist. So it's really the Aussies v Kiwis head-to-head -head in the next hour. Oh, yeah, Danny. He's right. Good, mate. You, you do feel in those initial deliveries. In Christchurch, let's go back. In the first test match, Damien Martin was pushed back. Big inside edge, but it was adjudicated out. You see the bat come into play right about now. The big blip in Snicko. Yes. And I felt that the Tory was pretty much trying to set him up for the same sort of dismissal, but now he's come over the wicket. Right, Danny, come on, lads. Yeah, I think it's a clear indication of tactics at the moment black. that that New Zealand are setting themselves up for the second new ball. I think they're in a, a holding pattern. I was in a holding pattern the other night for about three quarters of an hour trying to land in Wellington. Oh, yeah, Dan. And never got out of that holding pattern until I went to your town, Christchurch. Nice, mate. Anyway, sorry, mate. <laughs> I just had to throw that in. pushing it through I mean what's with the fog we're still in summer aren't we <laughs> fog for two or three days couldn't believe it New Zealand's name is the land of the long white cloud it is too isn't it windy welly oh, and spinning and bouncing good mate I think they've had a chat at tea time and said, well, if we can just keep things nice and tight here, the second new ball may play a very important part. Oh. Nicely played. There was a little cry of ah from Vittori, feeling that there was a risk taken there from Cadditch, but he always had it under control. Oh. Damien Martin starting to get in full flight. There's been a couple of shaky strokes since T, but there's nothing better than when Damien Martin eases one through the offside through point. And the disconcerting thing for Stephen Fleming here is that all three bowlers that have started off a session in this third session or started off their spells have gone for four off their first ball. So whether that's just not being tuned in 
that Damian Martin ready to pounce looking for that scoring opportunity and unfortunately the New Zealand bowlers giving him that with the first ball of their yeah oh, mate good and yeah that's not what the captain no. asks for he he wants you to be to be ready from ball one it's very very important to make sure you always ask him questions six, about not to give any of those easy runs and Damian Martin here just to away enjoying having Astle oh um, yeah yeah through the oh, Tory coming in at him and Australia brings up the 200 with that with that boundary 202 now and Damian Martin is on 48 so uh, well lads the little milestones one just about to be reached and one just being ticked off oh. and that'll bring it up that'll run away for at least two and 50 runs for Damian Martin uh -huh. Hard luck continues for Ian O'Brien. Kadic searching for that. And it's good bowling. He's been pretty unlucky in this spell. As you see there, Kadic out in front. Again, we see maybe the ball sitting in the wicket. The Australian batsmen are searching for that. Getting well out in front of themselves. And Simon Caddish was dismissed in the hundreds. Once he picked that 100 off, Astle getting out in front of himself. Oh, gee whiz. He's dealt with that, and that wasn't too short either. Whoa. Now he really does set himself up for this, and he has collected that at almost around knee height. It wasn't a traditional pull shot as such. He's almost just flicked it. And beautifully played. Simon Cadditch straight down the ground. And as always with Simon Cadditch, he never looks to overhit the ball. He's got a little shuffle across and then leans on it. Got to get the house in order. Otherwise, all the good work for the first 80 overs could go down the gurgler very quickly. That's beautifully timed. Gosh, that's a magnificent cricket shot. All about balance, holding the shot and showing the full face of the bat. Well, you talk about a checked stroke. You look when he actually, where does the bat go after he makes contact? Look at that. Hardly at all. That is the, the timing that Ian Smith's speaking about. And placement just to the left of the bowler and his follow through. That's better. You see? I think he has sort of lured into wanting to play that a lot square and he's closed the face on this. These are ones that you actually, with the ball coming in, that you can get an inside edge into the stumps pretty easily. Slightly shorter because of the last delivery. Coming down on it quite late. Perhaps looking to get that down to sort of the third man area. Yeah, I, I just think that's another lovely stroke. This, uh, the new ball, of course. Hardly think those. I think that's another one. It's another boundary. Second one of the over. I'll take a look at this then. I mean, the footwork is not absolutely perfect. Sometimes we, we go on about the footwork side of it, but just look at the way he checks it again. St stuns the follow-through, and all the power is coming from the wrists, really. <coughs> one either side of mid-off tormenting and smile on the face as if to say man I got that and Stephen Fleming just to confirm the fact that he's starting to sweat a wee bit has gone all the way down from slip to his number one strike bowler to sort this out cannot be driven down the ground like that so he's got to take third slip out and put him into third man 
And what I, I guess what he's going to do here is bowl a little shorter and perhaps a little wider. So covering it third man, gully and two slips. Here's the width and uh, another one. That'll race across the, for the third boundary of the over. This is quite superb batting. Quite superb. I was reading a, a little comment by Nathan Astle over the week, Ian, and it was, it was saying that it's all about sort of having a good base to play and a good platform to play your strokes from. Not a lot of foot movement, but a very solid, strong base that you play your shot from. And the stronger the base sometimes, the more power. There's more flourish in that shot. But he, he gets a lot of power, but not much movement of the bat. Seemingly not a lot of effort into it. You see, a lot of other batsmen will be jumping around and have a lot of moving parts. He doesn't. This one he's got away as well. And that's the fourth boundary. 16 off the over. but David Shepherd had signalled very quickly and the left-hander has to go, missing out on a cut shot. Kadich may not be happy. Franklin's got one sort of in the right area. Short enough, but maybe it's a little bit close to him. Generally through his career. Wow, he's picked that up, swung it away and make that half a dozen. Wow, slapping it over point. And Australia start to put the foot on the gas. Since then, he's turned things around and he is absolutely motoring. Yep. Beautifully timed. Holy cow, that's gone for four. That's gone. That's gone a long way. Whew. Not quite the elevation to send it uh, all the way, but it's four more nonetheless. 12 from the over, 283 for five. Hooked away, and he's, uh, in fact, fell as he's played the shot. A la Rohan Kanhai from the 60s. And he picks up another boundary. Swung himself off his feet here, Damien Martin. Just look at these spikes probably get caught and down he goes. In the air and just out of reach of Gully. Races away. System. Four more. And the 300 up for Australia emphatically as Gilchrist puts another loose ball to the boundary. Yeah, 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 yeah. For quite a while and he's come back and he's matured and he can play anywhere in the world and he's this effective all the time edged and down uh, to third man it'll be uh, a chase in vain for McMillan that's 15 boundaries to Martin and he's only one boundary away from century number 12 Controlled, trying to lay off down to the third man area. And he gets it down towards third man. He knows it's going to go for four. It's been a brilliant fight back innings from Damien Martin. Once he found himself at home at the Basin Reserve, he has done it with style. And Ricky Ponding and all his fellow players know the value of this century in the course of the day. New Zealand have now given it away. Australia, you own it. No, well, there's no one down there. There's no one at second slip, and it's the same old story. You're getting peppered all around the park. You can't have them everywhere. Oh, he's gone in the air. And looks to me as if he's going to be safe. Yes, he has. Wide long on. Didn't quite get hold of it. Was dismissed. You can see Daniel Vittori down on his haunches there. He's disappointed. He can't believe it. You know, he's got three out there. He's beaten them in the air. He's only got it at the bottom of the bat, and he's dragged it again as he did at Jay Stadium. He did put it into the grandstand here, slightly longer boundary. 
But he did beat him, and it did turn. Oh. And he's going to get runs off the last day, last ball of the day. Going to have two runs, so... A bit unfair, really, for Vittori, who finishes well. Six Kai. runs from the last over of the day's play. They shake hands with Damian Martin, his 12th set century. Gilchrist uh, will end the day on 45. Martin 106. This is at Jade Stadium. Here's the, uh, the virtual field. And that was exactly the field in place late yesterday, in that last over when Gilchrist came down, deceived in flight, and then banged it to the onside, and there was no control over the shot at all, but it fell slight, safe for Gilchrist, and it was this area he got away with it. Oh. But it was a remarkable shot, and, and such confidence to play at that stage, but Gilchrist now raises his back for another half century dynamic player and he's so consistent such an asset to this Australian side brings up the 50 and the 100 partnership between these two 75 minutes 20th test half century for Adam Gilchrist it's a good stroke and that will defeat the sweeper that is beautifully played Damien Martin hits uh, the first boundary of the morning, 350. Now, through point. That'll run all the way. And it's very hard to stop once he gets going, and he's away again this morning. And he hasn't stopped against New Zealand all summer. That's the bottom line. He's just been flying this New Zealand attack. Innings after innings. It started at uh, the Gabba in November. He and Clark turned the game around with a partnership of 216. Then, of course, Katic and Gilchrist uh, at Christchurch, 212 for the seventh wicket. And now it's up over 100 here for the sixth wicket. Gilchrist in those partnerships, 126, 50, 121, and now 54 not out. And he did throw in a little 100 against Pakistan in the midst of all that. Hooking. And six. It's amazing. It's amazing. There's just no boundary big enough. And these are, as Martin Crow says, a little larger than other grounds here in New Zealand. It's interesting to see how far that would have carried it at an Australian cricket ground. I mean, all the grounds in world cricket now, are the boundaries are shorter because they have the rope that they have to inlay about two metres or three metres inside the perimeter of the oval. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. Again, nothing wrong with the ball, really. Just one of the cleanest strikers uh, that the world has ever seen. It's the shift of the weight, and uh, it is just the full face peeling off another boundary. 4-6-4 four, four of this over so far. Pure. Where do you bowl now? How do you stop this man, Gilchrist? You do. You take him. No, he's put him down. Marshall had it. Martin had him. And the ball went down. It was in. It was held. And I think when Marshall's elbows hit the ground, it spilled. It can happen when the elbows or arms make contact the ground. He'd taken a spectacular catch, but hadn't quite grasped it. It wasn't in tight in the hand. He hadn't got all his fingers around it when his elbow hit the ground. Ended up sticking in the right hand. Down goes the elbow, and out she comes. But that's one way to stop Gilchrist, is take a great catch. No, oh, he wouldn't drop too many of those either, Hamish Marshall. Wait there. This one, dealt with. 
anything slightly short. And we'll go through that area over and over again. Like that. That's a very big six. Very big six. His third in this innings, but his 77th in test cricket. Coming down the wicket, but giving himself a little bit of room to swing so he creates the arc. And look how far that goes. And he goes again. Yeah. The Basin Reserve and most modern grounds today just can't contain this man. And that's what makes me think sometimes, Chris, to have a man on the boundary, sometimes is there any need for it? You can attack his defensive game a little bit more. But that's a 150-run partnership between Martin and Gilchrist now. Pushing for two. In fact... That's a terrific stroke. 400 up for Australia now. Yes. And just down the ground as well. Wonderfully timed. Yes. Here we go. Stand by everybody. 13 fours now and four sixes from the bat which has waxed fat on runs you yeah, look I'm running out of things to say here the way to describe his batting we, we, we keep just using the words brilliant awesome Scat! in the air a little lucky from Martin but he's going to get a boundary lovely stroke going to make it as well. Gee, it's difficult when you've got someone like Gilchrist at one end and you try and get him away from strike. And then Martin. Really, just a check drive again. Such a good base to play the stroke from. Solid base, you see there. Really just checked. Oh, There wasn't one there and that's where it goes. That's test 100 at number 15 for Adam Gilchrist. As quick as a flash, he's done it again. He's changed the course of a match. He's given us all a treat. He is a miracle, a freak. Say what you like. Brilliant. To go forward and to be positive. Edged and through slip and away for four more. You almost, uh, if you're feeling around the back, anticipating another big shot to the boundary and sometimes subconsciously forgetting that he is human and he can edge them as well. Not, not really uh, wide enough for Fleming and not fine enough for McCullum. Great shot for four. Beautiful shot. Damien Martin has hit this so late, it's almost a case of hitting it out of Brendan McCullum's gloves. He's just waited, waited, whack. That's oh. a boundary. And it'll uh, run across the point region for four, and there's the uh, 200 partnership. It's got through the field and away to the fence for four more. Again, beautiful timing, but it was a half volley, easily dispatched. Well, you don't see Lou Vincent get uh, drilled very often. Damien Martin has 150 beautifully crafted runs. Crafted is the right word. He, he really has been artistic. He's really uh, fashioned a very fine performance here. Oh, that's good bowling, mate. That's one of Gilchrist's best. Another four through the covers. 
see the angle with Martin he, he gives uh, Gilchrist a little bit of angle and that's all you need open invitation at least of this session that sort of treatment can be dished up to the bowler bowler in regularity I mean it's as simple as that so look I think just before just after T is when we'll see Australia declare so 470 for five now in the over so you're thinking seven sessions seven sessions and the Australians would feel that gives them a chance well they could declare now they've got a great first innings total and it's been at a run rate of 3.85 given the, the delay or the, the no play on, on the first day and they've, they've got a substantial total now but I, I think they're their feeling is well let's get more than 500 and try and bat once in this test match let's just use the remainder of the test match to try and bowl the black caps out twice that's in the air that's over the top and almost onto the roundabout is dynamite stroke player Adam Gilchrist and once the ball is hit it stays hit 491 for five well listen to this whack this is a mighty stroke slog sweep just outside off stump going on length you can just see it above the horizon there for a moment and then disappearing into what is another feature of this ground really the Pahutakawa trees edge did it carry? It's the highest score for Martin now. He moves to 164. There's the 500. Out, gone, Damien Martin. 165. So 35 shy of a 200. And finally, some glee, some happiness in the New Zealand camp. And O'Brien was a wicket taker. Yeah, well done, O'Brien. Isn't easy. Did this one just hold up, just a fashion move, just enough away as Martin played towards the line of the ball. No huge celebration, of course, because look, 503 for six. But there's Damien Martin leaving the basin reserve to grand applause. 165, 24 fours, no sixes. Generally kept the ball along the ground all the time. Some lovely stroke making. And he departs the basin reserve. Wonderful innings. 165. And Aussie now 503 for six. It's a good stroke. That's a poor delivery. And Gilchrist just laps those up as he brings up the 150. Magnificent batting from a great cricketer. Oh, good stroke from Warren. This time it was width. And as he timed that he has, it'll be four. Very next ball, who knows? Oh, good stroke. Whoa! Shane Warren loves it uh, in that little slot because he can just stand and deliver. And there, he's come down, looking to go over cover, skied it. Will McMillan, oh, he won't be able to pull it up inside the boundary. Shane Warne taking four from his first delivery from Shane Warne. And that ball is going towards Eric Tyndall. Catch it, Eric. <laughs> Tell you what he would have, if he wasn't 94 years of age and uh, sitting down, he probably would have had a crack at it because it landed just in front of him and Warne it's the seventh six of the Australian innings, his first. Hammond's last, uh, Hammond's test as well, yeah. Good. That's a good shot. Good for placement. Just run away for four more. Well, I believe is the, uh, Hammond's is the, the second oldest living Australian cricketer, Billy Brown. He's 92 years of age, a legendary opening batsman for Australia. And, uh, out of sight from any other team. 
gone. Sharp chance for James Franklin. It was the bottom of the bat. He picks up the prize, the ultimate prize at the moment, that of uh, Adam Gilchrist, who leaves and should leave to a massive ovation. He thoroughly deserves it. A good crowd in the Basin Reserve on this Sunday. Toe into the bat, and Franklin is surprised that it came back to him on the full and he took the catch not the most convincing way to take a wicket but he'll take it adam gilchrist an awesome 162 runs and it's 557 for seven Bowled him and uh, james franklin has picked up number four some late reward coming here that was very expensive from dizzy as you call him He had gone, he was trying to play out of character, aggressive style really for Jason Gillespie. He's more of a nicker and nudger and, and backs it up with strong defence. But Australia trying to, to advance this total, not to be with Jason Gillespie. He's gone for two, 5.59 for eight. Whack! I have to run for that one, that's sweet. Big hit, mighty big hit. Lovely use of the feet. He is a good striker in the ball, Shane Warne, and he's an even better player when he comes down the ground. When he targets to hit the ball straight, he's a lot more effective. At times, he, he can try and over-hit the ball, which slices it to the offside, to extra cover, and he loses a lot of power and distance. Oh! And just the little turn to the onside to bring up his 10th half century in test match cricket, Shane Warne. It's come in rapid time. And there's Lukey Sparrow and the boys cheering the hero on. 570 for eight. And Slats, the declaration has come. So that was the milestone Ricky Ponting was waiting for. The Warne half century, Australia's milestone though is more significant brilliant batting performance lasting 140 overs they have amassed 570 for eight and are now saying to New Zealand good luck you go get them because uh, if you get too far ahead of yourself then McGrath will run through you 488 wickets there's the potential in this series to go to 500 you've got 25 minutes between now and T then you've got a two-hour session after that and then you come back and you think you've got to work on uh, not only on an over-by-over -over basis when you're working together in a partnership, but also seeing off every every individual bowler. Doesn't matter how quickly you score, and that'll suit Craig Cumming. He looks uh, a comfortable player at test level when playing at his own pace. Looking to leave and uh, looking just to play as straight as possible. Key thing is when you've been out in the middle for a long time is to get your feet moving. That will be the key thing for Cumming and Fleming. You've been standing around for days and all of a sudden you've got to try and respond to uh, a terrific fast bowler who bowls at a good clip and bowls at a, in a good length. Test you. Two men in your screen. Really, there's no scoreboard for it. It is time. It's batting time. Now, that's uh, an interesting shot to get off the mark with because there were cries from Bowler and from the slips cord and that coming went right across the line there, similar to the way he got out in the second innings at Jade. It's on about uh, middle and off, but yeah, it's playing too square. And if he misses that, he's gone. Yes, first innings at Jade Stadium saw Greg coming hitting nicely down the ground. shot will just keep the Australians interested it'll go away for four in reasonable control of that it was uh, foolish delivery from McGrath who looks a little ginger as he runs in hasn't quite got his pace yet won't take him long though but uh, no doubt he'll be looking to find that length and looking to trap the openers in front if he can that's how he uh, got his uh, innings going 
just a few days ago at Jade when they bowled Australia, New Zealand out for 131. It's a better stroke in front of square. Glenn McGrath just starting off a little slowly. Bowling straighter than what he traditionally does, but this may actually be a plan that they've identified with coming who may be vulnerable with that delivery that is straighter. Really, I just think it's McGrath getting into his work. Try and find that McGrath line in length. in between test matches and he has just missed the ball out of McGrath's hand and this uh, Rudy Kurtzen says is going to go on and hit off stump it's, uh, it hasn't come back enough for me but it's a risky thing to do to not play a shot and New Zealand have lost their skipper first ball gone for naught it's nine for one and what a great response. He's thought about what he's meant to be doing. Couldn't quite get into that position before T, but straight away he's shown his, uh, his hand. He knows full well the plan, doesn't he? He knows that uh, they're going to pepper him, they're going to try and hit the shoulder of the bat or the gloves and get him out in a soft fashion. So he decided, well, this is a good pitch. But, no, I think Harris Marshall is, is winning this particular battle. Has he though? Has he though? He has it! They've got him! They have got him! He was playing so well, but they set the trap. They made it very obvious. And McGrath has hauled in the wicket of Marshall because Gillespie has hauled in a very useful catch. Yes, yeah, so and my prediction that Marshall was on top of this has really emphasised Oh, wonderful catch. What a, a great competitor McGrath is. It looked like Marshall had been on top, but not to be New Zealand, 55 for two. It's a test now for Vincent facing Kasperwitz because he's an attacking bowler. He's always coming at you, going at the stumps. And there, inside edge. In an attempt to play it through mid-on or straight down the pitch, the wrong line is played. He's trying to work out why. It's the angle of the bat, isn't it? It's, it's, it doesn't take much. At that pace and uh, the pace of the bowler forcing the bat almost off its uh, perpendicular. It doesn't take much to just to get it at the wrong angle, but at the moment not quite coming off flat. <laughs> Bowled him, he's dragged it back on. Well, they got him, didn't they, in Christchurch with the pull shot. It was Kaspervitz there. It's Kaspervitz here. Oh, man. Craig Cummings on his way back, and all of a sudden, New Zealand have lost their third. Yeah, but another big wicket to Australia. This ball not bouncing as much. Kaspervitz can be a little skiddy at times. The moisture's out of this pitch here at Basin Reserve. Doesn't quite get up. Under edge. Bang. Bold. He's helped it onto the pegs. Three wickets now to Australia. Kastrovic is first, and it's 78 for three. Got a turn there. And the turn just allows Vincent to open and free the arms up. So six runs from the over, it's 104 for three. Only five overs to go. That man, Jim, James Franklin, in your pickship. Ready to go in as nice. night watchman. And it will be quite an ask of Franklin because being a left-hander, he's going to go in there and be exposed to these worn, but also to the foot marks from both bombs. Oh, oh, nice Nemo. Nice 
I'm just also it's actually you can see the lights are on in there and how and it's quite dark. Yeah! And there's Shane Warren holds a good slip catch because it came quite quickly from the bat of Nathan Astle. And he's done it again, Michael Clark. Nathan Astle's been dismissed. Yeah, and often, and with Gillespie not bowling this over, maybe Nathan Astle was relaxing. He knew Clark was the man here. Played at a ball, he didn't really even need to play to. Shane Warren taking an excellent catch. That's come quickly. Fleming Nort, Marshall 18. Astle 9 all missing out to Franklin his night watchman has survived to uh, lead New Zealand's fight tomorrow along with Lou Vincent 38 not out 122 for 4 McGrath picked up it and the night watchman James Franklin promoted from uh, number 9 up to number 6 Craig McMillan doing next and then Brendan McCullum this is an afternoon of fight now uh, New Zealand have right, to gentlemen, they're ready for dig us. in and uh, yes, we are ready for your ship. Let's get involved, eh? Let's get this test match on the road again. Michael Slater has joined me. Rudy! So, expressed himself a number of times throughout the last few days, and uh, he'll be keen for Australia to make early inroads, I am sure, through Jason Gillespie. Yes! Vincent straight away up the other end off the mark this morning or this afternoon it's been a breezy morning and thankfully it's blown a bit of the fog away in this low cloud that's been hanging around I think we'll be clear for uh, the remainder of the day a huge job for Vincent and now Franklin the night watchman he needs to dig in like well, the man he's facing Jason Gillespie he's the night watchman for the Australian side when required and quite often can be a menace. Menace, once he, he's out there, he'll face a lot of balls and use up a lot of time. Wait, wait, wait. Go, Nick. Yes. Yeah. Out of the grasp of Michael Kaspervitz. Yes. Two very good uh, defensive shots, really. They're producing runs. First one of Vincent was full of authority into the covers and... Uh, he turned it over, and how about this from uh, James Franklin? Nice back in front of the stumps, a straight bat coming through. Eyes on top of the ball, and uh, he timed it beautifully down through mid-off. Good start. Because you can be positive in defence. Yeah, it's going to be hard work for the Australians. It was an interesting chat with Adam Gilchrist earlier today when they first arrived at the ground, and you know, he recognises that this is the the best time to bat, the conditions out there, the pitch has flattened out, a lot of the moisture, the original moisture is gone, there'll still be a little bit in the surface because of the covers that have been on it for some time with this climate weather, but the Australians know they've got some hard work if they're to wrap up this first innings, and maybe have a go at the Kiwis in their second, enforcing the follow-on. So it was as simple as saying, well, look, batting conditions are at their best now. And it's the the tail, it's the McCullums and the Vittoris who have given us the hardest time. And we've struggled to get them out quickly so far. line but uh, once again right in behind it to James Franklin David Shepard standing in his last test now 13 years ago today which match was David Shepard standing in there you go 13 years ago today which match was David Shepard standing in 1992 Couldn't get it. No, well, they didn't have neutral umpires at that stage, so I'm, I'm thinking of a test match in England. Well, they're not playing test cricket now. Oh, that's big shout. That's pretty straight. I'd say an inside edge has saved him. 126 for four. And Vincent off the front foot. Bashes him, uh, really, through Weidman on. For four. 
Well, I was watching a few highlights from when Vincent got his debut 100 at the, at the Wacker a couple of years back, and there were a lot of these sort of shots, front foot pull shots. It's a difficult stroke to play, but it's a natural stroke for him because he likes that front foot press. And on this easy paced pitch here at the Basin Reserve, not too many troubles there. For rough soil with a, a few shells and of course you and I know how to bat on those sorts of pitches and we knew how to bull we knew how to bull the bulls Whereas Smithy had no idea and of course Jerry was too tall Adam Gilchrist look where he's standing oh, oh. setting up outside yeah, leg stump really which is a rarity you don't see that too often and it would feel strange for him and not the orthodox way oh. to do it but this is the effective way very much the attitude of the Australian team. Well, you don't have to do the norm. You do what's right and the most effective. And again, setting up outside leg stump to Vincent. Oh! <laughs> Shane, like this. It was interesting last crazy, night he didn't uh, opt to go around the wicket at all. And a uh, quick chat with him at the end of play. He said I was uh, quite happy just to continue to try and exploit over the wicket, particularly the LBW possibility with the little lap that uh, Vincent was... Uh, using from time to time now he feels that Vincent's in he's got to try another method oh yes and he's getting a little bit out of those uh, foot marks maiden over uh, 166 for four easy to survive it's not so easy to score quickly it's not necessarily the, the game plan edged and gone Kasmovic has the ability to slide the ball across the left hand on this occasion and Franklin no footwork and a little fiddle and he is gone now it's been their plan from the moment they entered the, the paddock today the Australians to get Franklin caught on the crease there's going to be that fuller ball that got the outside edge Kasperwitz that unusual release he's got taking the ball away from Franklin and Gilchrist will not miss those don't be surprised if Kasperwitz is the main we could take it today James Franklin a, Worthwhile 26, 166 for five. That 50 was uh, a good one, I might say, as, as it was a uh, contribution towards a fine win against South Africa at Eden Park last summer, supporting Scott Styrus, scoring 80. Well, too many misses there. There it is. It's plain as day that he's, he's been underachieving and that's got to turn around very quickly if he's got to going to stay in the side oh and that came crashing back onto his stumps that's all right you can get away with a couple of those Damien Martin got away with a couple in his very tidy hundred that was very very close to the off stump it's amazing when things aren't working your way that you seem to get out every way and, it, and it's, you get out easily. That's a good sign for McMillan. No, not there. It's a better stroke from McMillan. Much better on this sort of pitch to play with the full face rather than with a closed face. He's trying to slash that ball and when you're using half the bat and the ball's not bouncing and there's a uh, real possibility of dragging it on as he nearly did it's much better to, to play with that uh, a vertical bat of which he's very capable of oh, yes, overstepping on um, that occasion Kasovic a couple of tactical is issues for me from these New Zealand batsmen I mean Kasovic it's very much a bowler that comes in on a line to the off stump like that. He's not a Glenn McGrath who goes on a straighter line. Therefore, with not a lot of footwork and the foot going out to the pitch of it, to play a big flying cover drive, you, you really are taking a risk. And I haven't noticed too much change in the tactics from the likes of McMillan. And, and therefore, you're exposing more ways of getting out. And they're just subtle changes that batting point of view you need to make when you're playing against an opposition you've got to look to hit in different areas to, to different bowlers yeah. Yeah. 
beautiful bowling from Kasprovich. Boy, oh boy, what a classic. Little outswinger. Length was spot on. And this, and just trying to push it to, into that uh, extra cover region, was undone by Beauty. Well, these are Kasprovitz's conditions. There's not much in the pitch for him, but he keeps charging in. He gets better and better the longer he bowls. And he's got that skiddy style. And just this unusual release that gives subtle change to the line in which he approaches each batsman. Lou Vincent guts it out for 63 runs. It comes to an end, and it's 180 for six. Just to keep looking down south towards the end of Adelaide Road and seeing less and less of Adelaide Road that as the minutes tick by it's just starting to be shrouded in mist. It's the kind of conditions really where if you were off the field you probably wouldn't start. Umpires would say well it's not fit the light and general conditions don't feel right so we won't start. But uh, because they're out there they're staying out there. Oh boy he's trying to go around the back door of uh, the batsman there and uh, Rattle into leg stump. McCullum, as always, keen to take up the challenge. Not quite the rough there for Warren to pitch into. It's an interesting philosophy that Warren's adopting here because earlier in the season in Australia he was actually, no, um, I think, widened by Alim Dar. Catch! Yeah! Oh, what a catch! Terrific catch by Michael Clark sprawling away to his right and Brendan McCullum has gone just third ball. He looked busy again today, didn't he, working through the onside. A drive, a sweep shot and now one that he couldn't keep down. Yeah, really a gifted wicket here. McCullum not over the top of the ball, really doesn't know the pace of the wicket and Clark, a wonderful fielder, he's not going to drop that sort of chance. And the Australians really do feel as if they've been gifted a wicket by McCullum. Sad demise for New Zealand. Brendan McCullum for Michael Clark from the bowling of Shane Warren for three. Isn't that amazing? You know, when you, you think about all the things that go on in a day's play, that uh, Daniel Vittori. Daniel Vittori's pads have been spotted with two emblems on the straps. And uh, the match referee and uh, the powers that be have spotted that and they've said, you must cover up. There you go. So one on each and that's actually quite a tidy job for Dan Vittori. Not one to be too worried about look of things but hmm. so you have a look at the emblems on the back of Craig McMillan's bat which is just emblazoned with bat makers logos and sponsors products a bit farcical isn't it? commercial era That's Craig McMillan, and he's oh, about wow. to do battle with the man who dismissed him down in Christchurch in a very peculiar way. So what sort of philosophy? McMillan's adopting, and he says, I'm going to take the, the show to you this time, Shane Warne. That's a huge hit. <laughs> Boy, you loved that, didn't you? <laughs> you almost Certainly hit, did. You almost hit that yourself. But it was good footwork and got himself into a perfect position to launch. It made him smile and it made Shane Warne lick his lips as well. Contest is officially on. Oh. Yes, McMillan. McMillan realising that the footmarks don't pose as big a danger at all. They were down in Christchurch, and so he, he feels comfortable to come down the wicket and hit through the ball. Nice footwork. And just hitting through the line. Powerful man. Oh. And nicely played, and the difference 
He's got a scamp, he's got to go. So does Vittori. Oh, direct hit there. It's Michael Clark in the left hand again. That's the end of the over, 195 for seven. Torres seven. McMillan is 20. Two fours and one six. Looks to me as if it might have lifted a wee bit. The fog coming down. Yeah, it is. Couldn't see the top of that hill before. So maybe the news is good for the next uh, half hour or so anyway. And we've got to just over half an hour until afternoon tea. Here's the battle again. Oh! Gee, that's gone a long, long way. That come out of the foot marks or off the body of the pitch as such. Just the foot mark, I think it caught that oh, foot mark, the corner of it. But it, gee, it went at a great angle. Oh. All right, Warney, I like it, mate. Stuff coming, buddy. Come on. Half hour in the tee, boys. Come on. The doubt created by Shane Warne. And this is the dismissal in Christchurch where um, unsure how to go about facing Morn, played at a ball that he didn't really need to play it. Oh. And there, interestingly that he's adopted a back foot technique. We saw in Christchurch that he was playing on the front foot, but here we see, we see a definite movement back, to opening up the body. So this is maybe something he's been working on during the week. Because oh. the back foot philosophy to a bowler bowling around the wicket, a spin bowler bowling around the wicket, gives you more time to play. You can rule out LBW because the ball is constantly pitching outside the leg stump. And by playing off the back foot, just gives yourself a little more time. He's been thinking. Good to see some planning going in here. He's addressed what didn't go right for him in Christchurch. And you can see a definite plan being employed here by McMillan. Hey! He's hit the off stump. He played the waiting game, Shane Warne. He kept them pegged down. It's over. To Craig McMillan. He ran out of patience again. He played pretty well off the back foot, but now he figured this one's got to go. He played and he missed, and Warren's got him again. Sorted from around the wicket. It's 201 for eight. Great big oh. It's a big turn now. In Australia really pushing to get these two wickets quickly and if they can and get the New Zealanders all out within 80 overs it means the bowlers really haven't gone through a hard slog time here, lads. Plenty of time. And Gilchrist just reminding all to around in plenty of time here oh nicely bowled Warney and cool out there much uh, perspiration for the bowlers in these conditions. Therefore, if they can get them out in the next 10 overs, which you'd pretty well assume they can with the roll on they've got, the bowlers haven't had much of a workload. Therefore, will be fresh for the New Zealand second innings. And, and so New Zealand really want to try and extend this, tax the Australian bowlers a bit longer, and hopefully they'll be thinking they'll run out of steam for tomorrow. Fielders come in now for the final two balls of the over so that they can keep the Tory pinned at this end that he's at and uh, therefore O'Brien again becomes exposed to Kasparovic or Gillespie. Gillespie the one operating at the moment. <coughs> Big hit, that'll be four. Good stroke. <laughs> Bowling, yeah, nice Yorker. Leg stump, just flicking leg stump. And he deserved it, Gillespie. 
He probably had him over trapped the over before LBW. He had him uh, put down, and, or at least going past Gilchrist should have been caught. Now he's got him. He's got his man. Bold. Neck and crop. And the first wicket to Gillespie gave O'Brien a, a fearful working over for that one. It, he's redirected back onto the stumps off his pads. O'Brien will be disappointed, but there might be just a hint of relief also. He's out for five. 2.12 for nine now. Partnership of 23 valuable runs. More importantly, 25 minutes used up. one no problem and Shane Warne is getting very frustrated he only gets two deliveries each over to try and bamboozle him and get an outside edge or get one through and strike him in line for the LBW and it's it seems thinking he's working overtime what can I use now come on I just need this one oh. Martin keeps it out yet again a change of ends continues at 2.35 for nine. Well, Tim Coney is uh, driven down here today for the Dilma Tea Party. He's just aged a couple of years. Well, he waits and waits and waits. They've used up three pots of Dilma Tea. New think, ball is due. Yeah, but it gives the, the, the brothers a bit of catching up time, you know, extra time together. I don't know that they, they're able to catch up too often, so that's a good thing. Tell you what will be interesting is whether Jerry can get a word in. New ball is due, and Ponning has gone to Glenn McGrath. May just to stick with the old ball and allow Warren to continue, but uh, certainly needed to get Gillespie out of the attack, as that didn't work. I think they'll take the new ball, Marty. I just think it's worthwhile. It the old ball, they're, they're in some sort of rhythm, the Tory and Martin, and they've got a good understanding that the Tory's able to sneak up the other end towards the end of an over. So, it seems that the new ball might be a pretty handy option for Ponning to use. He's starting to stand and deliver. Really has been a great knock from Vittori. 36 now. He deserves uh, these runs just by virtue of the amount of overs he's had to bowl. Great strike. Take that. Babe Ruth. This is a baseball shot. She got Amazing eye, Vittori. He's thumped it. Oh, no. So three balls from the ground. For the one boundary. Tori looking for a single from this ball on, I'd, I'd imagine. And he's helping by being there, Martin, but he actually hasn't contributed one run to this partnership. Space 16 deliveries. That's what's handy. This will be four more. No one out. Square leg. Full toss, put away beautifully. 44 now the Tory. 31 the partnership. Reminds me of uh, the partnership that Orem and Martin had at the Gabba last year. Don't think Martin got too many that day either. Orem certainly got a big hundred. But this will be starting to uh, get on the nerves of the Australians despite the big lead they still have. 
Und die vor. And McGraw might try the bouncer, but uh, Vittori will have a crack. Oh, beautifully bowled. The Yorker. Now I think the bouncer to follow. Shit, that Thought he was going to sneak that one through then. Jim McGrath it was perfectly directed Yorker. Tory He's not going to be in behind it because he keeps giving himself room. So that makes a Yorker even harder to play. Nickel keeping Martin on strike. Not to be Vittori now. He's up the other end again. 2.44 for nine. Shane Warne is going to continue, so the new ball won't be taken just yet. He's got another chance to try and close this innings down. And for the remainder of uh, this session, up until tea, probably just less than 10 minutes, it'll be Ian Smith with Chris Cairns. Thank you, Michael. Umpires just came together in between the over there, and uh, I think they just probably looked at uh, the weather. Just a hint of uh, moisture out and about. Is one big hit from Vittoria. It's in there, it could be caught though. Damien Martin takes the catch in the deep, and that is the end of the New Zealand first innings. Daniel Vittori's brave vigil at the end is all over, and Australia have done a demolition job again on New Zealand today. They've taken six wickets, pretty quick time. Vittori, the last of them, looking for the big numbers, the six. To bring up a half century, Damien Martin lined it up and held it comfortably into the chest. And that's another wicket for Warren. The Tory goes for 45, and New Zealand are all out for 244. So we'll now have a break of 20 minutes find out whether Ricky Ponting is going to ask New Zealand to bat again. The smart money says they will do that. But uh, New Zealand have scored 121 runs, but they have lost six wickets in the process. So and that uh, and is not good enough to try and save this test match. They have a good bit with their next turn at bat. Australia are hot favourites now. They must be. 81.1 overs, 244. Vincent, 63. Cumming, 37. Franklin, 26. McMillan, 20. And Vittori, 45, last man out. They got to double figures. And in the bowling department, Australia bowled like the perfect unit that they are, with everyone making a contribution. McGrath, 2 for 50. Gillespie, 1 for 63. Kaspervitz, 3 for 42. He sparked the downfall. 3 for 69 for Shane Warner, 1 for 8 for Michael Clark. 570 for 8, 244 New Zealand all out. A trail by... Four hundred and ninety-eight balls uh, scheduled for this day. Maybe a few more with the odd no ball thrown in. So let's say five hundred. So far they've got through the first twelve. Fleming looking at uh, the square leg fence there. He's uh, something uh, that's bothered him. I'm not sure whether. He knew that uh, Square Leg was uh, in that position, whether he had... Whether he'd gone there without Fleming knowing, I'm not sure. There's no fine leg, is there is. There's Gillespie, who's off the field, but he's just coming into play now. Well left by Fleming. Two big bouncers, and David Shepard saying, that's your two. 
high enough to be called the two official bounces over the over. Can't bowl another one. And strange tactic from McGrath, given that he's got them up there in full and, and really troubled Stephen Fleming with the LBW and he, he looks to be taking on a short bowling approach which is a little different than what's worked for him against Stephen Fleming up until now. In my chat with Michael Kasperwitz Crowe he mentioned that yeah they might have tried a few little different things today the Australians I couldn't quite get out of him what what those different tactics would be maybe if, if things aren't quite happening, uh, quicker rotation of bowlers, using Michael Clark a little bit more. Well, that's worth a big shout and gone once again. There's the full length from Glenn McGrath. The first one of the over, and it works straight away. He's got real problems with his footwork at the moment, Stephen Fleming, and this is not a good start for the Black Caps. Three innings in a row now. McGrath has uh, trapped... Uh, Stephen Fleming, it's uh, a beautiful delivery. The shape was perfect, the length was there. Sadly, the balance wasn't uh, for Stephen Fleming. That's four LBWs in two test matches. Skipper has gone for one, three for one. It's in, with all the work he's supposedly done in between test matches and in between innings, it's, it's really not paying off. And it just shows that, that some habits that the batsmen get into or players get into it, very hard to change them quickly. Oh, that one's dead back. The grass got another one. Hamish Marshall, second ball. What a start for Australia and Glenn McGrath. Well, this time it's uh, one that goes the other way. A little bit of uh, seam, not a lot. And uh, Marshall just didn't react quickly enough. Just didn't bring the bat down. And uh, can it into the back pad, which makes it easy again for Shepard to adjudicate him LBW in front of Milanoff and North for Marshall. Three for two. Twelve minutes to go. I make it to lunch here. Changing the bowling. Shane Warne has been brought in by Ricky Ponting to replace Gillespie. Well, though he, he wasn't uh, successful in the wickets column, he's certainly been testing by swinging the ball. Man, that number of wickets there. No one has surpassed that. So, Warren here is probably going to get uh, two overs at least. Vincent on strike. Kind of orthodox field at this stage. Man in close on the leg side for, uh, for the defensive shot, mid wicket mid on and then backwards square for the sweep stroke and on the offside you've got a slip and a short cover just sort of a, a backward point which is not too deep it's got a strange position really punching it into the ground and getting it up over Ponting Shane Warne, you see there, 576 wickets, some 24 wickets away from a mind-blowing 600, and you can almost see it ticking over in Shane Warne's mind that if he picks up a few here, a few in Auckland, the Ashes will be the 600th wicket. Oh! Misses the footmarks, misses Gilchrist. Let's go to now go. Oh! For buys. This is a strange one actually, sort of continued to spin after it had gone past Adam Gilchrist that uh, it's gone straight on, no real turn there, Gilchrist anticipating a bit of turn but the ball itself just sort of continued around and went down towards sort of a third man position and Sam uh, not only able to get the ball to turn on the wicket but also off the wicket. <laughs> Very clever. Oh. Straight down the ground, Vincent. It's a boundary. It's the first boundary, in fact, uh, of the innings for New Zealand. 
Yeah, and Michael Slater will be happy to see this. An advancement by Vincent down the ground. No risk. Meeting it on the full. Realising Morn looking to flight that one up. More loosener, I think. Shane Warne's getting his body prepared to bowl about 30 or 40 overs today. Good shot by Vincent. Oh, yes, Shane. And Gilchrist just supporting his bowler. He'll be very vocal behind the stumps today, trying to insinuate that there's actually something going on when there's nothing occurring. Part of the tactics employed. Always believing that something can happen. Oh. Well, opportunity there for Vincent. He'll pick up a couple more. Fielding by Kasperovic. May wouldn't surprise me if there was a double change. Kasperovic maybe come on for one or two overs. May persevere with McGrath, but I'd be tempted to give Kasperovic an over or two before lunch. Oh! That's the over. Into the first over from one. Ten from it. 28 for two. Stories to tell. I think what was encouraging is that they, they really have knuckled in and fought very hard. You can see them working in between deliveries to playing straight to knowing where their off stump is. And Vincent as well has picked off some loose deliveries, which is what you should do. Two fours in his 24 to date. Coming took nearly 40 minutes to get off the mark. And uh, absolutely nothing wrong with that just didn't get anything to uh, to put away at all he's uh, looking the goods in isn't he as a test opening batsman well it's been a very promising start because he he shows the ability to bat time he's got a nice look about him basically hitting the balls early on in the innings in the right area of the ground him, he's dragged it back on success for the Australians and Kasperovic now has 100 test wickets and look he fully deserves all the accolades what a special moment in a real tradesman's career handshakes all round for Michael Kasperovic and congratulations a wonderful effort for a great try and a great bowler and Lou Vincent uh, who looked he threatened to get the inside edge in the first innings and uh, straight after lunch he has got the inside edge back onto the stumps and a disappointing end for Lou Vincent Bold Kasperovic for 24 37 for 3 37 for 3 New Zealand Nathan Astle with uh, 4,000 runs under his belt Runs are not the issue here at all. He's up against a man, the 32nd Australian, to take 100 test wickets. Oh! Magnificent yes. performance. And that Ashley will get off the mark with a mistake there by Michael Clark. First man since Stuart McGill took 100 uh, test wickets a couple of years ago. Just couldn't get the bat vertical. You could see it angled. The little gap between bat and pad took the inside edge onto the pad and then onto the stump. Looked good in the end, but uh, the horse had bolted. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, if you look at the celebration, first of all, I mean, that's a fantastic sight because I think they all appreciate just how hard this bloke works to achieve what he does and how hard he has to work to get into the side and stay there. Next thing to look at is the angle of Lou Vincent's bat initially and then where it gets to afterwards, after he plays it on. Look at the angle of the bat there. And now he'll pull his bat in close to his pad as if to say, what's wrong with that? How did I miss it? It's the angle of the bat there and then he pulls it in close. Now if it was in the position where it was when he finished playing the shot, he'd still be playing shots. It's 38 for 3.
Well, as I said uh, when he departed, that this is a sign we did see in the first innings, and he survived it, but he was lucky to. He did. You could see him between balls, looking at trying to keep that bat straight all the way, but uh, the bottom hand just gets a little ski whiff, and that opens up the blade. But let's uh, focus on this man here who's uh, posted his 100th test wicket for Australia, the 32nd Australian in the uh, history of test cricket to do so. Brilliant stuff. Very humble man and a real trier with uh, some very subtle skill as well. <coughs> Graham Gillespie opened up uh, this morning and uh, Kasparovic and Warren finished it off before lunch and it's those two now who will continue to bowl in tandem oh. he runs Aston did look to play the, the ball and it'll come off the pad there's Nicely bowled by Shane Warren with that leg spinner. He wants to try and get it drifting into leg stump and then the turn towards the off stump. Opens up the batsman and uh, the temptation is that you go towards the ball with a closed bat to hit it to the onside but Dassel did well to keep the blade open and the full face was shown. Oh! And occasionally he was playing it off the pitch. Don't you know Shane Warren will be just working away at Rudy Kurtz and he's had so many opportunities to stand at his end when he's been bowling and first thing I would have said was Rudy did you have a look at that LBW shout over lunch you have a chance to look at that mate it's very close I thought it was out just there in the nicest possible way when he handed his jersey to him his hat to Rudy did you did you have a chance to just see if it bounced too high or I certainly thought it pitched in line He's bowling for LBWs, Shane Warne. Oh, well, I just hope Rudy Kurtzen has uh, the courage to turn around and say, get back and bowl. And I'll do the umpiring. Obviously oh. played by Astle. Uh, he took up the strike again. That's the over. Three from that over. 41 for three. It's a tough customer, that Rudy Curtin. He, uh, he's been around a while from South Africa. I don't think he. I don't think he buys into any of that uh, small talk, Smithy. I think he just ignores it all. Any good umpire would. Chip is a good man. He's already made two uh, LBW decisions. Um, and uh, he's been busy in the summer. Uh, in, this, in this series with the LBs. Come on. Hey, I think he's got them pretty well right too, hasn't he? David Shepherd. As you said, Smitty, this is his last uh, last test match doing these two countries. I understand he's going to do four more test matches in the West Indies and uh, he's going to finish off in Pakistan. Probably make him a nice cake, farewell cake, in Faisalabad. Got to be careful though when you're uh, 
touching that sort of stuff there because they say unless it's boiled you don't touch it yes Smithy sorry this, my mind was a long way away there I was trying to talk about something else with somebody else trying to line up something for when Warren's bowling again was it important enough for you to go through it again no, I was just talking about David Shepherd and, and uh, that We've all thought that this was his last test match of all time, but he's got four more, two in the West Indies and two in Pakistan. I just sort of thought that, you know, I was suggesting it might be a, a cake sort of at the end of it. But no! You're taught and you're told that the only things you eat in Pakistan are, uh, are, is food that's been cooked, boiled. I mean, a cake's baked, but you've got to watch the icing. <laughs> You're right about all of that stuff, I've got to say. But I think I was right, that was hardly worth mentioning again. <laughs> In fact, uh, uh, we understand now, Martin, is that uh, they may well not have any in Pakistan so I can hold back on the baking powder so to speak that's a very good shot uh, you know they've set up for Craig coming again for the pull shot he's going to take it on but on that occasion he played it quite beautifully they've set the trap again a la Christchurch men packing that onside look at there one two there all in front of square so Cummings says, I'm still going to play it, but I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to hit it squarer than you are. Three players there. And that, what I, I've sort of nicknamed it the flounder net because that's what it looks like, a net of people just walking in trying to grab flounder. 47 for three. looking to way to the south there and that's where we've been glancing throughout this whole test match I must say in the last five minutes it's got particularly misty so uh, we'll keep an eye on that southerly direction because that is not looking flash at all and look there's moisture on the camera raindrops on roses as they say well it'd be roses for the New Zealanders if they could get out of here with some bad weather David Shepard is casting his uh, eyes in that direction. Here's Shane Warne in the meantime. Yes. Not getting the ball to spin a lot from uh, over the wicket, but he, you do suspect that he is trying to bowl for LBWs. And uh, I thought he was very close to having Lou Vincent just before lunch. And that's when uh, he had the little hot uh, altercation. He just asked the Rudy gets in the question. How about that, man? How about that one? Lou Vincent was worried. You could tell he didn't want to look at anyone. Here comes the rain, folks. Here comes the rain. It is just speeding down Adelaide Road over the Basin Reserve. Oh! Tonight on the umpires, they're going to come together. Yep, one ball. And they're uh, very worried here. And I think now it's the time for Ricky Ponning to get a tad worried. Because if they go off, it'll be a while until they come back on. They can decide that they're going to play in it. No, no, they're going to come. They've uh, said to the ground staff, get them out of there, but the ground staff aren't there. The ground staff are having their lunch. They've got to get round and get those covers out here. Got the signal, but uh, at the moment, uh, the Australian...